We make a, a sort of core argument that there's sort of two different kinds of societies. There's the physical world, which we're all obviously familiar with. We're all citizens of countries. There's police and laws and so forth. And there's also cyberspace. In cyberspace, you'll have, by our account, multiple identities, multiple names, multiple so forth. And for various reasons, you probably have more than one. Um, and the identity that you have there will also be constrained by the physical world. So for example, if you start doing things which are completely illegal and inappropriate in cyberspace, somebody in the physical world is going to come visit you because they're going to get a subpoena, get your IP address. Similarly, if you're in the physical world and you're a terrible dictator and you're busy doing terrible things to your citizen, people in cyberspace will use that to put enormous pressure on you to accuse you of genocide and sort of hurting your people and all that and provoke an international reaction. The two have slightly different rules and they keep each other in check. Of course, there's a lighter side of this, too. If we accept the fact that with 5 billion new people coming online in the next decade, every individual in the world will increasingly split their time between the physical and, and the digital environments, think about all the people in the world who, for a variety of reasons, have lost the opportunity to function in a physical world. The Internet gives them a second chance. And let me give uh, what I think for both of us we would agree is the most powerful example of this, which is we were in uh, Pakistan and uh, met a group of women who had acid thrown on their faces by the Taliban. It's the worst thing that probably either of us have, have, have ever seen. And through no fault of their own, as a result of local norms, women who bear physical scars on their face as a result of such an atrocity uh, uh, have to live with a stigma in the physical world that essentially doesn't allow them to work, doesn't allow them to get married, essentially does not allow them to function in society in any meaningful way. So they all lived in this house together and they were being trained in entrepreneurship. Uh, they'd become reasonably tech savvy. They had smartphones and they were able to essentially have a second life, uh, no pun intended, online. Uh, they were running businesses. One of them met somebody and eventually was able to get married because the internet knows no scars. Uh, the internet gave them an opportunity to function in society based on the merits of what they were doing and saying. And that's an extraordinarily powerful thing.